All the time that I was alone, I thought of what I would do. If only I dared. And then I saw the robot. 2,000 plus. Science fiction adventures in the world of tomorrow. The years beyond 2000 A.D. 2000 Plus presents The Robot Killer. So, you are Mr. Samuel Donaldson. Yes, sir. Happy Sam, they call me. Yes, I know. I have friends who think your television program is very funny. I do not. That's a living, Professor Strager. Now, may I see the mechanical man I'm giving away as the jackpot prize on my show next week? It is not a mechanical man, Mr. Donaldson. The correct word is robot. R-O-B-O-T. I know, I know. This robot is a supreme achievement of our electronics division. We worked on it for six years. We'll do whatever it is instructed to do. I simply do not understand how the management of this corporation can think of giving it away to this public, to this magnificent mechanism. Oh, look, Professor, this corporation sponsors my TV show. We're on 1,246 stations. We're telecast in three-dimensional color. And the Happy Sam Show is the number two favorite in the country. The sponsor thinks it would be a good advertising gimmick to offer a super jackpot prize, a mechanical man, a robot. And I never argue with a sponsor. Now, please, may I see what I've come to see? All right, young man, I have no choice. Come along. There it is. Experimental robot 23. Rather. He's really something, Professor. Six feet tall. Shiny metal. Flexible fingers. Say, how does he work? Very simply. His electronic controls respond to ultra-high frequency waves which emanate from this microphone box. Speak into the microphone. The robot will do whatever you order him to. Anything? Virtually. Robot 23 has an electronic brain. You can try for yourself here. Okay. Sing sweet Adeline. Really, Mr. Donaldson, what a ridiculous request. You think the best scientific brains in the country work for six years for a robot? Is... Heavens. Will you be mine? Oh, it, it really tried to sing. <laughs> He's very clever, Professor. Hey, he watch this. Pick up that broom in the corner and sweep the floor. Oh, boy, the housewives who watch my program will love this. What? I'll be darned. Look at there. He's doing it. He's doing it. Okay, okay, stop sweeping. What a gadget. What a giveaway. Now, I see something for the kitties, and I'll... Hey, hey, what is that? That kitten is the pet of Dr. Broderick of the physics laboratory, and I assure you, you cannot give that away. I don't want to give the kitten away. I just want a little heartthrob on the show for the youngsters. Here, kitty. Come here, kitty. Come here, kitty. Come here, kitty. Come here, kitty. <laughs> now, 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 kitty. Now, down the floor you go. Now, down the floor. Go ahead. And we'll show how gentle and friendly our jackpot prize robot is with pets. Now, give me the mic. Mr. Donaldson, what are you going to do now? Okay, Robot 23, go over to the kitten, pick it up, and pet the kitty. Nice kitty. Meow. Meow. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't Meow. that sweet? Meow. Boy, what a camera shot on the air. Hey, 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 what's he doing? Robot 23, drop the kitten. Drop the kitten. Drop kitten. Oh, poor Tabby. Why, he... He he killed the kitten. Broke its neck. He tried to pet it, and he killed it. Well, you see what comes when... when fools play with science. No good will come of giving this robot away to the public. I warn you, no good will come of it. <laughs> Hello, ladies and 
ladies and gentlemen, hello, this is Happy Sam the Happy Man, welcoming you to another half hour of mirth and melody. Boys, how about a fanfare? Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, thank you very much. Now, you know that every week, for the past four weeks, our grand super jackpot has been growing and growing. At this moment, these are the sensational prizes in that jackpot. A free rocket plane trip for two to Paris, flying in the new 150-passenger luxury rocket cruiser at 60,000 feet, only three hours and ten minutes from New York to Paris. A caddy atomic-powered sports roadster, the automobile that never needs gas or oil. It runs almost forever. A Krylon man suit tailored to your measure. Krylon is the wonder fabric guaranteed to last 100 years. And with this suit, a special set of 14 different Krylon chemical colors. Dip that suit in the color you prefer. Wear it, then change the color with another rinse. The suit is always pressed, always perfect. 14 suits in one. A complete wardrobe on your back. And the one thing money cannot buy... More money. Yes, $10,000 cash. Now, those are our jackpot prizes. And now, tonight, we add one more prize. A prize so fantastic and wonderful, nothing like it has ever been offered to a lucky winner before. This prize is a supreme achievement of modern science. It is an entire retinue of servants in one amazing machine. It is a slave to your every command. And here it is. Michael, the Mechanical Man. <laughs> wonderful robot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And now, now to determine who wins this giant jackpot and who wins this mechanical marvel, Michael, the Mechanical Man, a thousand slaves in one amazing machine. Now, as you know, ladies and gentlemen, each and every one of you millions of people watching this program on your visit screens are receiving this program via microwave. And now, our computators are in action. They are, they are channeling every microwave reception on this program. When the spinner disc stops, if your television set is on, if you're the lucky person, you win the jackpot. Wait now, wait. The computator has finished. The engineer signals that the spinner disc is slowing down. And we have a winner tonight. We picked up a set who had us tuned in. Our pretty model is walking across the stage with a name. Thank you, honey. And now, here it is, the name you've all been waiting to hear. 423 North Glencoe Boulevard in Martin Hills, New York. Apartment 5B. Mr. John Hanold. Mr. John Hanold. <laughs> Down, Mr. Hanold. My practiced medical eye, judging from the smile on your face, tells me that you're pretty happy that Mrs. Hanold is being released from the hospital today. Oh, it's not only that, Doctor. Don't tell me you haven't heard of my other good piece of luck. Everyone in town's been calling me for hours before I left for the hospital. Another good piece of luck? No, I haven't heard. Why, I won some fabulous prizes on a giveaway show, including $10,000. Oh, <laughs> that means your bill's going to be paid. <laughs> and I also got a trip to Paris and a mechanical man and Lord knows what. Well, that's wonderful. I congratulate you. However, I think I will forget that trip to Paris for a while. What? In fact... Wait a few hours before telling Mrs. Hanold about your good fortune. Oh, why, Doctor? Mr. Hanold, after your wife's illness, she suffered a nervous breakdown. She became mentally unstable. But she's pretty good now, thanks to what the hospital has done. However, when you take her home, she must feel she's returning to her normal life. And winning $10,000 prizes isn't very normal. Oh, I see. The main thing we want to avoid is a relapse. Mm -hmm. She should have a few neighbors who can drop in and see her now and then. Well, there's Miss Barton, Virginia Barton. She lives in the apartment next to us on our floor. Oh, well, yes, yes, your wife mentioned her occasionally. Do they get along all right? I, I, I think so. Why? Nothing. I just wondered. Well, Mrs. Hanover's waiting for you. I know you're very anxious to get her home. Nurse, have Mrs. Hanover come in, please. I think in another month or so she'll be fine. Oh, here she is now. Hello, Mrs. Hanover. Mary, darling, am I glad to see you. Hello, John. Hello, Doctor. Yeah, what did I tell you? Doesn't she look fine? Oh, she certainly does. 
John, how good it is to be going home. I'm as excited as a schoolgirl. Well, now, don't get too excited. You've got to take it easy for a while. Is that what the doctor says? He's such a worry bird. You do what your husband says, Mrs. Arnold, and you'll just be fine. See? Doctor's orders. I promise. Thank you, doctor. You've been very kind. I'll drop in from time to time to see you. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Arnold. Well, goodbye, doctor. All right, dear, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I can hardly believe it. Well, the doctor told me to wait until you got home before telling you. $10,000. And the trip to Paris. Think of it. Oh, I hope we can take it in the summer during my vacation. And a mechanical slave, John. Where will we put it? Now, wait, honey. You're not supposed to get excited. (laughs) Oh, my boy, who can help it? the crazy things they give away. Oh, I'll see who it is. Hello, John. Oh, hello, Virginia. Who is it, darling? Why, it's, uh, it's Virginia. Mary, I just had to come and tell you how wonderful it is. You're being back and all those wonderful prizes. It was very nice of you to come in, Virginia. And thank you for the supper you prepared for my homecoming. I was delighted to, darling. When John asked me... John asked you to? Well, yes, he was so happy you were coming back. John, doesn't Mary's being home called for a celebration? Can't we have a drink? Well, I don't know, Virginia. Mary's supposed to get rest. Still, well, I suppose one sip won't hurt. But I have to go out and get something, though. I'll, I'll be right back. Oh, darling, when you get your prizes, I'll have cause to be jealous of you. Cigarette? No, thanks. Jealous? Why? Well, you'll have two men. John and the robot. <laughs> Poor little me, a bachelor gal all alone. You know, I, I really think you ought to give me one of them. Which one would you like to have? <laughs> Darling, what a silly question. The mechanical man, of course. He doesn't drop ashes on the rugs. He'll, he'll wash the dishes and put out the cat. He'll never argue. You're lying to me. I knew you were serious. What did you expect me to be? I don't understand. But I do. In the hospital, I began to understand a lot of things. I know the doctors thought something happened to my mind. But all that happened was that it became... Very clear, very sharp. And for the first time, I began to think clearly. Darling, I I think this excitement's been too much for you. I shouldn't have come in. Because I was here. Is that why you shouldn't have come in? You're wrong, Mary. Everything you're thinking is wrong. John would come to the hospital only once a day. But he was working. Some days he wouldn't come at all. Mary, you know he has to go out of town on business once in a while. I know many things. I would lie in my hospital bed and the shadows would whisper to me. They would say, where is John now? While you lie in an antiseptic bed in a hospital room that is as cold as a surgeon's knife, cutting your memories to pieces. You frightened me. Don't, don't go. John will be back in a moment. I... I have a headache. I've got to go. So what will John say when you're not here? You poor darling. You poor sick Mary. Yes, walk out on me, Virginia. Leave me alone. But I'm not alone as I was in the hospital. I'm home now, my home. And I'm near you. Near enough to kill you if... If only I could think of how to do it. That robot's quite a guy, isn't he? He looks something like the Tin Woodman of Oz (laughs) I used to read about. Well, I doubt so, but he can do any of the things they said on that program. Oh, well, my guess is we'll have to sell them for junk or give them away to some kids. Well, let's see. The directions say, turn on the racket switch for power, and then just talk into the microphone. Use simple phrases and precise instructions. Well, what's I tell him to do? He's your boyfriend. Tell him, tell him to move the green chair about two feet back in the corner. Okay. Move green chair back two feet into corner. 
John, he's walking. Now, that's the darkest thing I ever saw. Why, you did it. He's going to be all right. John, does he have a name? A name? Oh, don't be silly. He must have a name. He's almost like a person. I... Who does he talk to? What is your name? Your name. Do you have a name? I see, you can't talk. Don't ask him a question. Tell him to tell you. Do as the direction says. Tell me your name. Experimental Robot 23. Robot 23. Kind of gives me the creeps. Oh, it's wonderful. Well, now what I do? Can't stand there staring at us. There's nothing for him to do around here. The poker, that steel poker in the fireplace. Well, what about it? He looks so strong. Tell him, tell him to bend it. Bend it? Well, Mary, that's solid steel. He's just a tin toy with electronic nerves. Please, John, tell him. But, honey, he'll probably get a short circuit or something, straining himself. Then we will have to jug him. Oh, all right, all right. Bend poker there. Bend steel poker. See, he just picked it up. But nothing's happening. Bend it. Bend it. You see, I told... Good Lord. Oh, he's bending the steel as if it were taffy. And did you see that? Why, it's almost as if... As if he threw it down, disdaining of showing off. Why did you turn him off? He's dangerous, Mary. Dangerous and frightening. I'm going to dismantle... No! Now, wait, don't get so excited about it. You know what the doctor said. Don't get mandolin, John, please. All right, all right, all right, all right. You insist. Remember, Mary, you're not to give him any orders except when I'm home. Darling, I wouldn't do anything that wouldn't be right for me. o'clock. Almost four hours until John comes home. Lock the door. And now to make him come to life again. Speak to me. Say to me, hello, Mary. Hello, Mary. Hello, Robert 23. How nice of you to visit me. Every day you visit me. Why do you do that, tell me? Because I love you. Because I love you. Because you love me. Oh, Robert 23, how handsome and strong you are. And you are mine. You do what I want you to do. You are my slave. Say to me, I am your slave. I am your slave. That vase, that vase that Virginia gave me last year, there, the blue one. Destroy that vase. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Robert 23, very much. Of all the things in the world I have, you are the most wonderful. Because you love me and obey me and would do anything for me. Anything. Oh, the door, someone there. It can't be John. It's much too early for John. I'll see who it is and you'll wait for me. Wait, as you always do. You. Hello, Mary. I'm sorry to disturb you. What do you want? This package was delivered to my door. Something you probably ordered by phone. It's marked 5D, but your name's on it. Should have said 5B. Yes. Yes, from the grocery. Oh, is that the mechanical man standing in the living room? That is Robert 23. Does he really work? He's awfully big and clumsy looking. He's come to visit me. He's mine. He doesn't love you. Doesn't love... Of course not, Mary. Of course not. I'm sorry to have disturbed you. Is there anything I can do for you? No, no, nothing. Go away. You saw her, didn't you? Say, yes, 
I saw her. Yes, I saw her. She's the one, the one I hate. And John, John is the one I love. And you, you love me. Say, I love you. I love you. You must destroy her the way we destroyed the bays. Now that you've seen her, you know my secret. And you will kill her for me because you are my slave. Say, I will kill her. I will kill her. Virginia, this is a pleasant surprise. Why are you calling me? It's about Mary. Mary? Was something happened? What is it? I rang your doorbell a few minutes ago. One of Mary's packages had been delivered to me by mistake. She came to the door. Yes? She acted very strangely. Particularly when I asked about the mechanical man, the robot. Well, what do you mean, Virginia? Strangely. Well, she wouldn't let me come in and look at him. She said he... He didn't love me. What? She was in a strange... Well, a strange mental state. John, are you sure she's all right? Virginia, listen, the robot wasn't moving or doing anything, was it? Not that I could notice. But Mary's attitude and her odd remarks... I knew I shouldn't have accepted that tin monster. Well, I'll get home as soon as I can, Virginia. Thanks for calling. Dr. Rosenblatt, this is John Hanold. Oh, yes, Mr. Hanold. A neighbor just called me. Mary's acting strangely. I'm worried. I don't understand, Mr. Hanold. Well, we won some prizes on a TV show a few days ago, and one of them was a mechanical man, a robot. Oh, yes, you told me about it. Well, the robot, in my opinion, is a dangerous gadget. Well, anyway, one of the neighbors reported that Mary is talking strangely about it. I wonder if you could meet me at the apartment. It'll take me about half an hour to get there. Uh, Mr. Hanold, I hope you'll forgive me, but you've got to expect that neighbors with all the goodwill in the world tend to exaggerate the ex actions of the people whom they've known to have been mentally ill. I'm sure there's nothing to be alarmed about. Well, yes, but, Doctor, this neighbor is a good friend and an intelligent woman. Well, I've had a lot of experience in these matters, Mr. Hanold. However, to ease your mind, I'll try to drop over sometime this evening or in the morning. We'll have a talk about it. I'm in a meeting now. Well, all right, Doctor, if you say so. Thanks very much. Hello? Oh, Virginia, uh, this is John. Yes, John. I just spoke to the doctor. He thinks there's nothing to worry about, but... Well, I wonder if you'd do me a great favor. Of course, John. What is it? I've got a few things here to clean up the desk, so I can't get home right away. I wonder if you'd go in and stay with Mary until I get there. But, John, I... Frankly, I'm a little frightened. Well, that's silly, Virginia. After all, what can happen? <laughs> Again, the door. Wait, Robert 23, and I'll come back to you. Say, I will wait for you. I will wait for you. Thank you. Thank you, darling. Mary, I wonder if I could visit with you for a while. Why? Why do you want to visit with me? Why, darling, I'm your neighbor. And I thought it would be very nice if we had tea. Don't you want me to come in, Mary? Yes. Yes, I do want you to come in. Come in and meet Rosa 23. Mary, he's moved since I saw him last. He was standing by the fireplace when I was at the door before. And now he's by the sofa. Oh, darling, that lovely vase I gave you and Johnny. It, it's broken. Broken in a million pieces. I had him do it. He did it. He did it. 
What do you mean? You know what I mean. You and your lies and your deceit. Mary, what are you doing? Why are you picking up that microphone? Rogue 23 loves me as I love John. And he won't destroy my love. You won't. Rogue 23, don't you? Uh, kill her. Kill her. Mary. 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 Please, please stop crying. Good heavens, what happened? Mary. Excuse me, Mr. Hanover, but I think I can tell you what happened. I'm Professor Strager, one of the men who built that robot. I came to your apartment hoping to persuade you to return the robot. I had a dreadful commotion inside. Called this patrolman in the corner and we forced our way in here. The robot was moving toward this young lady here. I, I, I tried to get away. Wherever I went, it... I me. shut off the control box and stopped the robot. Mary wanted to kill me, John. Kill me. Doctor, how's Mary? Is she, is she all right? I've given her sedatives, Mr. Harold. I'll take her back to the hospital in a few hours. With all this excitement. Yeah, however, I'm sure she'll be all right in another month or two. But she tried to kill me. She tried to kill me. For some reason, she was jealous of you. But now that we know her obsession, we can treat it psychiatrically. And she'll be all right, Doctor. She won't try to kill again. And I think what might have happened to Virginia... Mr. Hanold, nothing would have happened. You see, your wife told the robot to kill. But that was not an instruction the robot could carry out. What do you mean, Professor? You said yourself the robot was going toward Virginia. Yes, of course, because your wife said go to her. A simple physical action the robot is capable of performing due to its directional mechanism. However, the command kill is not sufficiently explicit. The robot cannot kill in general. It must have step-by-step -step instructions as to how the command is to be carried out. You see, Mr. Hanel, I might put it this way. To strike out blindly, to kill without thinking, requires an emotional drive, the capacity to hate. And that the robot cannot do. It is, after all, a machine, not a human being. 